Hi friends, my name is Bob Rodante and welcome back to ArcRage 5 Beta. So the new version of the beta got released, like yesterday or something. So let's check it out. I almost have to go to bed right now. I was being a worthless piece of flesh the whole day. But in the end I thought I can't just have the whole day gone, so let's do something. I don't know if I'll paint anything, but let's see what's the progress. I've seen a few new features here and all. Ah, whatever, let's actually paint something. So there's a bunch of different fixes and improvements on tools. Let's concentrate on custom brush right now. So, check this out. Eh? Invert! So now we can easily invert the brush, Alpha. So there was some uh, tweak with the spacing of the brush. I don't know what that's about, but we'll see later, maybe. Maybe we won't notice. Oh, also, the developers uh, wrote a comment under the previous video, so... The thing about changing the opacity with the pressure and removing tilting for the brush. It's all in the secret little thing. So we press the sign in the settings window. And there set stylus properties. And then here you can, inside of the pressure, we can add like control over opacity, control over size. What else? Oh, ro rotation. Okay. The tilt direction, there was the angle here. I removed it, or rotation. And it changes with the preset of each brush, so it's like continuation of settings from the brush designer, basically. Yeah, so another thing that I noticed is in here, very luminance and very color. I think this is new. So the point is that it's, uh, this is the color variation thing, color dynamics. Which is cool if you're going for the expressive art style. I kind of use it sometimes these days, you may know that. So that's a thing. The only thing is weird is that, yeah, I don't know, like very luminance. It kind of works, but it works weird, like when you turn off the pickup color. Because in this case, it's kind of like, it doesn't change its brightness, it's actually erasing itself, you see? Like a different mode, it's actually just removing its own alpha. I mean, it's kind of cool that it has a different mode, right? Because there's not a problem to turn on the pickup color and remove actual picking up. Yeah, there we go. It has a really strong luminance variation and very color, and you can just paint this LSD rainbow all day long. Kind of cool. So yeah, this is actually kind of helpful if if you know what I mean, because not all the artists appreciate dynamics of the color, but it's a cool thing. I usually have it turned on a little bit by default, at least just a few percent. Just I like the fact that the brush is never perfectly a flat ideal, so it has some kind of imperfections in its color and its brightness. Like this. This is like the basic way I work sometimes. So that's cool. Also, you see I have this pressure controlling the size of the brush very strongly. I don't usually do that. And that's because of one of the bugs that I was trying to explain in the comments. But it's kind of hard to explain it in text. So let's go through it right now. Right now we go from this point, right? We have a brush that has this full pressure control in here, like minimum size is zero, maximum is 100. So this is what we have. And when we go to actual canvas, so this is 300 size and this is 500 size, really huge brush. So this is the size of the brush, right? This is 500. And if I make it smaller, it can be like this small, 11%, and up to 1% being one pixel size brush. Right? It is controlled with the pressure, it gets less opaque and everything. Perfectly fine working brush. But if we go in brush designer and set up the minimum size to a high level, because I usually like either not having any pressure control over size, so the brush stroke would always have the same size. Or I actually prefer to make the size a bit smaller when I press slightly. So it has a bit of a natural feel, but don't go super tiny, because that's not very helpful. It's a good way to block in when you're painting, to have a brush of constant big size, then constant medium size. So you would be working with one level of details at a time. So at this case, I would have this kind of stuff. 
it's a bit smaller and then it gets a bit bigger when I press harder. Barely noticeable, but it kind of makes the stroke a bit more natural, a bit more narrow in the beginning, a bit wider in the middle. So this is the way I like my brush. But there's a problem. If we go to a canvas, at 100% it works just right. But let's try to make it smaller. So check this out. You see, this is 1% brush. Not one pixel size brush, obviously, now. So I can't make the brush smaller than this. And this size in here, like why it goes a little bit smaller, but not completely, is because it actually doesn't go below the minimum size number that I chose in here. So minimum size 77%. When I choose 1%, this is a 77% actually. And it doesn't change the size anymore at all. Like there's no control over size with the pressure now because it just it can't go lower than 77%. So now we have just this size no matter what size we choose below 77%. And that's not all of it. If we go bigger than that, now the biggest size of the brush is this, right? And it used to be this size. And now we can't make it bigger than this. It also had a very heavy problem with the spacing in the previous version of beta. But developers fixed that now, so no matter what kind of weirdness we have with the size, it still has a correct spacing, so it doesn't start lagging or it doesn't get too transparent. So we're halfway out of this bug. So that's one thing, so for now, to actually have a proper control with the size of the brush, we need to choose minimum size 0%, so we would have proper... Because apparently it's involved in the definition of the size of the brush somewhere, it multiplies with something or whatever, so that's why it changes the values. And now you can see we can have the brush really huge and completely small, so we have a proper change of the size. But we're gonna have to work with a really spiky kind of stroke, which is not that bad actually. It's still my favorite motion blurred Miyako brush. Now let's actually paint something. Oh, you can invert the grain too. That's actually also very helpful, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes grain just doesn't work very well when it's just like the photo, you know? It's better to invert it, so that's cool. So, I'm gonna read some other uh, improvements and go through those real quick. So, sampler tool now can pick up colors from an area instead of one pixel. So now we can like choose the average color from the big area. Fill tool now has two modes, flood and border. Flood just fills in the areas the way things usually go. Mm, nice anti-aliasing. Okay, and border... I don't know, I thought it was like you choose the color of the border, so only that border can stop the filling area. But it seems to work like everywhere anyway. Hmm. Okay, so this worked now, but this one will fill in everything. Okay, I think it needs some work yet. <laughs> Okay, there's a whole bunch of different fixes and small and not so small improvements. Yeah, let's actually, yeah, let's, let's, let's actually... I wanna paint a portrait, something creepy, because my parents are divorced. Oh, I also can see some improvement in the shape of the stroke. Remember, it was a lot more weird than this. It's still weird though, especially with the opacity or something. I wanna really try and just paint everything with my brush, maybe changing some settings, but really this should be painted with a custom brush this time, because I think this is like the most important thing. So all I can think about these days is just this upcoming Ghost in the Shell movie. So let's paint kind of like a face of a guy that has some kind of cyborg implementations going on, augmentations, and it's all kind of like creepy anti-utopic a bit. Like, not exactly aesthetic, or cyberpunk aesthetic. Okay, so let's see. It's just gonna be a search. Basically, it shouldn't go any further than what I just said. Just a portrait of a guy that had some kind of eyeball thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the kind of conversation that I have when thinking on the Ghost in the Shell movie. Yeah, so we have a guy, and he has like a thing in his eyeball. It's gonna be awesome. 
the brush is so much faster when you turn off the color pickup thing, the blending feature. So this is 500 size brush. Well, this is going awesome so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm just searching for proper colors and proper shape at the same time, but not so much about the shape yet. Hmm, another thing that it's kind of freaking me out. Like, I have a really big spacing on the, my brushes, like 28%, so it has a huge step. And the problem is with the positioning of the step comparing to the position of the pen. Like, when you make a straight line, it's not a problem. But if you want to make, like, a circle to make a round spot, it will create this weird star. Like, this feels immediately different from all the other software that I used before. Usually it doesn't do that. And in here, obviously... Let me compare to Photoshop. Because it kind of freaks me out. It kind of makes sense, but at the same time... Why does it feel so uncomfortable for me right now? Like, it feels definitely different. So, Miyako... 20... Let's make bigger, so it would be the same. Yeah, even this big... You see, the end of the pattern meets the beginning of the next one, so it's a circle in the end. I don't have to, like, do much, I just create a circle. And in here, the positioning of the pattern comparing to the cursor, it's kind of different, so it creates these kind of, like, a star. I think it's about the angle of rotation. In Photoshop, it kind of calculates it stronger, and in here, it rotates after the fact or something. That's why the angle is always not enough. Like in Photoshop, it would just rotate stronger. Just maybe like follow stroke, like it follows even stronger than that or something. I don't know. I really don't know what can be going on differently under the hood. Kind of like following the direction of the stroke, right? But like each pattern is a bit like right now, I'm already making the direction there, but the stroke is facing there. So the angle should be a bit stronger. I don't know, I'm just saying. Maybe it will help, because I'm pretty sure many people will think that something's weird with the strokes. So that may be something to adjust. This looks like some kind of writer portrait. So far, I'm just happy that it kind of resembles a human head <laughs> with balls instead of the chin. And on this uplifted note, we're gonna cut this episode and continue in the next one. Sorry guys, I had to cut it because there's a lot of stuff I talk about here and yeah, I don't want it to cut it out. Also, don't forget about the contest. December 25th, the last day. So submit your artwork to win a license for Artrage 5. So yeah, see you soon. Bye!